a small tangent on that. It is a fascinating open question to me on the topic of driving, hmm. whether, you know, supervised learning people, machine learning people think you have to like drive to learn how to drive. To me, it's very possible that just by us humans, by first of all, walking, but also by watching other people drive, not even being in sidecars as a passenger, but let's say being a, inside the car as a passenger, yeah. but even just like being a pedestrian and crossing the road, you learn so much about driving from that. It's very possible that you can, without ever being inside of a car, be okay at driving once you get in it. Uh, or like watching a movie, for example. Yeah. I don't know, something like that. It's have you ha have you taught anyone to drive? No. So except um, myself, I have two children, uh -oh. and um, this is I learned stressful. a lot about car driving because my wife doesn't want to be the one in the car while they're learning, so that's my job. Yeah. So I sit in the passenger seat, and it's really scary. Um, <laughs> I have, you know, I have wishes to live, yeah. um, and they're you know they're figuring things out now. They start off very, very much better than I imagine, uh, like a neural network would. Right? Mm -hmm. They they get that they're seeing the world. They get that there's a road that they're trying to be on. They get that there's a relationship between the angle of the steering. But it takes a while to not be very jerky, mm -hmm. and so that happens pretty quickly. Like the ability to stay in lane at speed, that happens relatively fast. It's not zero shot learning, but it's it's pretty fast. The thing that's remarkably hard, and this is, I think, partly why self-driving cars are really hard, is the degree to which driving is a social interaction activity. Yes. And that blew me away. I was completely unaware of it until I watched my son learning to drive. And I was realizing that he was sending signals to all the cars around him. And those, in his case, he's he's always had social communication challenges he was sending very mixed, confusing signals to the other cars, and that was causing the other cars to drive weirdly and erratically. Mm -hmm. And there was no question in my mind that he would he would have an accident because mm -hmm. they didn't know how to read him. Mm -hmm. There's things you do with the, the speed that you drive, the positioning of your car, that you're constantly like in the head of the other drivers. Yeah. And seeing him not knowing how to do that and having to be taught explicitly, okay, you have to be thinking about what the other driver is thinking. Mm -hmm was a revelation to me. I, yeah, I was, quite I was brilliant. stunned. So, so, so creating kind of uh, theories of mind of the other- Theories of uh, mind of the yeah. other cars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, which I just hadn't heard discussed in the self-driving car talks that I've been to. Since then, there's some people who do do consider those kinds of issues, but it's way more subtle than I think- There's a little bit of for. work involved with that when you realize, like when you especially focus not on other cars, but on pedestrians, for example, it's, it, it's a literally, staring you in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that when you're just like, how do I interact with pedestrians? Um, you have- Like pedestrians, you're practically talking to an octopus at that point. They've got all these weird degrees of freedom. You don't know what they're gonna do. They can turn around any second. But the point is, we humans know what they're gonna do. Yeah. Uh, like we have a good theory of mind. We have a good mental model of what they're doing. And we have a good model of the model they have of you mm -hmm. and the model of the model of the model. Like. They're, we're able to kind of reason about this kind of uh, the social like game of it uh, all. The hope is that it's quite simple actually, that it could be learned. That's what I just talked to the Waymo. I don't know if you know that company, it's Google South African car. They, the, I talked to their CTO about in this, this podcast and they, they like I rode in their car and it's quite aggressive and it's quite fast and it's good mm -hmm. and it feels great. It, may, it also, just like Tesla, Waymo made me change my mind about like, mm. maybe driving is easier than I thought. Maybe I'm just being hu speciest, human centric. <laughs> maybe- uh, It's a speciest argument. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. But it it's fascinating to think about like the same as with reading, which I think you just said, you avoided the question, though I still hope you answer it somewhat. <laughs> you avoided it brilliantly. It is, there's blind spots as artificial intelligence, that artificial intelligence researchers have yeah. about what it actually takes to learn to solve a problem. That's have, fascinating. Have you had Anka Dragan on? Yeah. Okay. She's a, one of my favorites. So much energy. She's right. Oh, she, yeah. That's She's right. amazing. Fantastic. And, and in particular, she thinks a lot about this kind of, I know that you know that I know kind of planning. Yeah. And 
the last time I spoke with her, she was very articulate about the ways in which self-driving cars are not solved. Like yeah. what's still really, really hard. But even her intuition is limited. Like it's, yeah. we're all like new to this. Uh, so in some sense, the Elon Musk approach of being ultra confident and just like plowing. Put it out there. Putting it out there. Like some people say it's reckless and dangerous and so on. But like partly it's like, it seems to be one of the only ways to make progress in artificial intelligence. So it's, uh, it's you know, th these, are, these are difficult things. Like, you know, democracy yeah, is messy. Uh, uh, implementation of artificial intelligence systems in the real world is messy. So many years ago, before self-driving cars were an actual thing you could have a discussion about, somebody asked me, like, what if, what if, the, what if we could use that robotic technology and use it to drive cars around? Like, isn't that, aren't people going to be killed? And then it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's not what's going to happen. I said with confidence, <laughs> incorrectly, obviously. Uh, what I think is going to happen is we're going to have a lot more, like a very gradual kind of rollout where people have these cars in like closed communities, mm -hmm. right? Where it's somewhat realistic, but it's still in a box, right? So that we can really get a sense of what, what are the weird things that can happen? How do we... Uh, how do, how do we have to change the way we behave around these vehicles? Like it, it's, it obviously requires a kind of co-evolution that you can't just plop them in and see what happens. But of course, we're basically plopping them in and see what happens. So I was wrong, but I do think that would have been a better plan. So that's, but your intuition, that's funny, just zooming out and looking at the forces of capitalism. And it seems that capitalism rewards risk takers and rewards and punishes risk takers. Like, it, it, and like, try it out. The right. academic uh, approach to let's try a small thing and try to understand slowly the, the fundamentals of the problem. And let's start with one then do two and then see that and then do the three. Uh, you know, uh, the, the capitalist like startup entrepreneurial dream is let's build a thousand and let's- Right, and 500 but, of them fail, but whatever, the other yeah, 500, we yeah. learned from them. But if you're good enough, I mean, one thing, it's like your intuition would say like, that's gonna be hugely destructive to everything. But actually it kind of, the 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 forces of capitalism, like people are quite, you can, it's easy to be critical, but if you actually look at the data, at the, at the way our world has progressed in terms of the quality of life, it seems like the competent good people rise to the top this is coming from me from the Soviet Union and, mm -hmm. and, so, and so on. Yes, it's like, it's interesting that somebody like Elon Musk is the way you uh, you push progress in artificial intelligence. Like it's forcing Waymo to step their, their stuff up uh, and Waymo is forcing uh, Elon Musk uh, to, to step up. It's fascinating because I, I, I have this tension in, in my heart and just being upset by the lack of progress in autonomous vehicles sure. in, within academia. Uh, so there's huge progress in the early days of the DARPA challenges. And then it just kind of stopped like at, at MIT, but it's true everywhere else with, uh, with an exception of a few sponsors here and there is it, it's like, it's not seen as a sexy problem. Uh, autonomous, like the moment artificial intelligence starts approaching the, problems of the real world, like academics kind of like, ah, all right, let, let the- Because they get really hard in a different way. In a different way, and that's right. I think, yeah, right, some of us are not excited about that other way. But I still think there's fundamental problems to be solved yeah. in those difficult things. It's not, it's still publishable, I think, like we just need to, it's the same criticism you could have of all these conferences in Europe, the CVPR, where application papers Right. are often as powerful and as important as like uh, theory paper. Even like theory just seems much more respectable and so on. I mean, machine learning community is changing that a little bit. I mean, at least in statements, but it's it's still not seen as the sexiest of uh, pursuits, which is like, how do I actually make this thing work in practice as opposed to on this toy data set? 